We're headed 254 miles to the sixth largest body of water in the United States, Lake Champlain. Lake Champlain covers 435 square miles of surface water and contains more than 70 islands. Stretching 120 miles long with nearly 600 miles of shoreline and reaching a maximum depth of 400 feet, it lies directly in a valley flanked by Vermont's Green Mountains to the east and New York's Adirondacks to the west. This area was once connected directly to the Atlantic Ocean and was called the Champlain Sea. During this time, any saltwater creatures were free to come and go through the St. Juan Seaway out to the Atlantic Ocean. As the land rose, anything that was in this area could have become trapped. These creatures, whatever they were, either had to adapt or die. Is this lake home to a prehistoric creature? Hundreds of eyewitnesses believe so. The creature sighted is now dubbed Champ, America's own Loch Ness Monster. Beluga whale skeletons have been unearthed around the lake, as well as coral, trilobite, and ammonite fossils. Therefore, evidence of this area being ocean at that time is evident. We are performing our investigation at Button Bay State Park in Virgins, Vermont. The area has been visited by such notables as its discoverer Samuel de Champlain, Ethan Allen, Ben Franklin, and Benedict Arnold. What once operated as a farm, it opened as a state park in 1964. The park is named for the button-like concretions formed by clay deposits found along the shoreline. This area over the years has been a hot spot for Champ sightings, including my own sighting in 2012, so it is a perfect place to launch our investigation. Both the Abnaki and Iroquois tribes living on Lake Champlain had their own legends of a creature in the lake. The Abnaki called the creature Tatoskak, which means big serpent. To the natives, these waters were sacred. When they would venture out on the lake in their canoes, they would place offerings in the water to appease the creature and allow them a safe passage. Due to rainy conditions and our tent being soaked, we had to sleep in the car. After a long night, I went to town to get us a coffee and saw a herd of cows grazing. Okay, maybe I lied. A few. <laughs> to the campsite, I heard something in the tent that sounded like it could be Champ. Nope. Just Wendell cutting wood.
we're headed to Burlington, Vermont to check out the Perkins Geology Museum. The museum is located on the campus of the University of Vermont. While school is in session, it welcomes students, scholars, and any interested public into its 38 exhibits of rocks, minerals, and fossils, including a prehistoric beluga whale skeleton named the Charlotte Whale that was unearthed from shores of Lake Champlain in 1849. This is the reason we decided to take a trip to the museum. Could this be the key to unlocking the mystery of what inhabits the waters of Lake Champlain? This beluga whale was found in eight feet of clay by a crew of railroad workers excavating for a rail bed in Charlotte. The laborers at first thought they had the skull and bones of a horse or ox, but someone wisely summoned Zadok Thompson, the famed 19th century Vermont naturalist with the help from Harvard scientists, he identified the remains as belonging to an 11,000-year-old whale, which helped to confirm that a good chunk of what was to become Vermont had once been covered by ocean waters. Thompson reconstructed the whale, and it wound up at the Perkins for all to see. Christine Hebert had a sighting of two creatures, not in the water, but on land. Since she was not feeling well enough to meet up with us, we interviewed her on the phone. Here is her story. We headed towards Burlington, Vermont to where Christine had her sighting at the Our Family Boathouse. Her brother Charlie told us her story and another story of a couple's close encounter of Champ while fishing near the boathouse. People laugh, but if you get the report of the Japanese, not the Japanese, yeah, I guess it was the Japanese. They came, put a boat in here to find it. Mm -hmm. They picked up something and followed it for three, four miles, and it got away from them. And right on their cell, it was right there. It was going faster than the boat. Wow. And then it disappeared. Yep. And that was all recorded. Yep. This is an ideal looking spot, you know, like when you're at Button Bay, you well, see. it's a little different now. This is all shallow. Yeah, but you can picture how, I mean, there's, it's, it's, it's a nice spot where the animal would feel comfortable coming well, yeah, out there. Well, yeah, because nobody know? bothers them. Yep. And he came right through. Then we didn't have that big sandbar out there or anything. And he came right up here in the light and just stayed there. Wow. And people say if it was true, how come no one ever caught it fishing? Hey, if it feeds on grass, yep. it's if herbivorous, yeah. no one's going to catch him with no. live bait. Nope, nope. And I try to tell him that. They say, oh, he's going to. So I don't pay any attention to him. But that's what happened. Wow. Quick. My mother. And my mother and sister was in that window. Mm -hmm. And my mother said to my sister, 
I think that words were, you see what I see. Wow. And then she said, yeah, she said, I would have never told anybody. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah People think you're crazy. That's but, right. And that's like with me. I just wrote a book on Champ. And, you know, there's people... quite a few people that saw him and even saw him on a ferry boat that was recorded. Yep. 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 Because I when I was down at Button Bay, I saw a hump come up. I didn't see a neck or a head. I wish I did. The people are gone now and their name was Hubbard's. Mm -hmm. The last place they had was on Shelburne Road. They owned a, a motel. Mrs. Hubbard died a couple of years ago. They used to come down here every Sunday and rent a boat and they'd go out fishing. They'd go around this point over to what we call Robert Hall. Yeah. The guy used to own it years ago. We call it Robert Hall. And uh, instead of fishing all day, they came back about an hour and a half later, two hours, whatever, and rowing. They came right back here, pulled the boat up, and the dog, the boxer dog, his mouth, he was frothing from the mouth. And they had all they could do was some gold. Yeah. And they got in the car and left. And they never said nothing. Mm -hmm. So I finally got a hold of him, and uh, he said, I don't want to talk about it. And I said, well, how come you, something wrong with the boat? And he said, no. And finally, after a while, they never came back to go fishing. They just came back and they sat here and, and watched. And then he said to me, we were out fishing in the boat over there where you sent us in front of, they used to go there every Sunday in, in front of uh, sand dunes in that area called Robert Hall and the sun was out and the water is only about three feet, four feet deep. It wasn't very deep. Mm -hmm. And they were fishing perch and just taking it easy out of the wind and all of a sudden the dog started growling and barking and they look over there they saw four or five humps out of the water with a head going by him about 60 feet and he said the dog was going real crazy oh wow and we had all we could do to squeeze him so we decided to get out of there because i couldn't believe what we saw so yeah. we came to shore and got right out i said why don't you say something he said who's gonna believe us yeah <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> i went to the mother's wake well, i went to the father's too but i went to the mother's wake and i mentioned to the kids i said you know your mother and father used to come down here steady with the dog and and uh, then they t I said about the, uh, they saw something in the water swimming they said that's why they never went by because they said they told the kids they told us about it so we never went oh, no. yeah. wow. one would think if this creature is a prehistoric relic since Lake Champlain was the sea at one time it would have had a diet including fish and squid we decided to try an experiment we took squid bait and tossed it into a secluded area in front of our night vision camera, hoping it would attract attention. The next day we checked the footage, but unfortunately, we didn't catch anything. The next morning was calm and serene. Button Bay is supposedly home to baby champs, and they are said to frequent the shallow waters, as it is believed since this is a secluded bay, it is a type of nursery for these creatures to grow until they get large enough to venture into the more vast parts of the lake. Since during the early morning hours and dusk, fish are in abundance, feeding on insects which is why Champ is frequent during these times, feeding on fish. We notice a disturbance in the shallows. Is it just a school of fish? Or was it juvenile creatures pursuing a school of fish? Although this was not a 15 to 20 foot creature most described, juveniles are reported to be 12 to 18 inches long and bigger depending on their age. We will perform an analysis of this clip later. We took a short canoe ride out to an island called Ships Point in Button Bay. Its shoreline is composed of sedimentary rocks, limestones, dolostones, and quartzites, which were deposited in a shallow tropical sea. 
about 500 million years ago. This area now contains some of the oldest fossilized coral in the world. The bedrock is very old and contains fossils from a time when life did not exist outside the primordial sea. We explored the rocky shores of the island and all of a sudden we saw something in the water. Maybe it's Champ! You can go that way. No. Go this way. I lost the piece of my uh, thing. That ain't good. <laughs> We're out on the lake, headed back. Yay. Hey. Fisher Captain speaking. <laughs> I don't know what I am, but up in front, and I need to get back to paddling. Bye! <laughs> What do you have planned today, uh, Miss Katie Elizabeth? Huh? Yeah? More than two? Yes. So what's your, what's your take on it? How do you feel about, how about this, your first book? I'm excited about it. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. A lot of effort put into it. A lot of time, a lot of research, yes. And today's your day. Today is your day. Alrighty. So, peoples, come out to the book signing, wherever you are. If you're over there in the woods, come on out. Follow us. Up in the tree. Come on. Follow us. Get your book. Water Horse of Lake Champlain. Sign. Not only can you purchase it and meet the author in person, 
this kitty, Elizabeth. But she will sign your book. Huh? Ah. See you there. And we are at the Champ Store. Champ Champ Champ's Trading Post. Yes. It's a beautiful little cozy place. Yes. You can see behind us here. This is a beautiful place. Oh, and there's Miss Beauty herself. That's weird, your hair looks blue in, uh, on the video. Looks exotic. It might be blue on a different mode. I'll have to check it. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. That's so neat. Can't get anybody to make it. Oh, how cute. Yeah. I'm going to Tourist Beast Stop for me. Tourist Beast Stop. I'm going to go to the local. I'm not used to being in the Tourist Beast Stop. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. You're welcome. It was a pleasure meeting you. We performed an analysis of the clip we filmed in the early morning hours in the shallows of Button Bay. We could not come to a definitive conclusion, but there was definitely something biological in our presence. One or a few juvenile creatures at feeding time? Perhaps. Aside from the video we captured, we did not have any other sightings of anything unusual or any physical evidence, but we are hoping to have better luck this summer when we return for a longer and more extensive expedition to find this elusive creature. We will continue to study, investigate, prove the existence, and protect the species of unique animals that inhabit New York and Vermont's beautiful Lake Champlain. Thank you.